Hey everybody, Mike Iaconelli here. Welcome to a brand new edition of In The Shop. And we've got a good one for you today. Today, we're gonna be talking about big bass, how to catch big bass, and there's no better way than a giant swim bait. In particular, we're gonna be discussing glide bait fishing today as a way to catch some of the biggest bass in your life. Before we get into it, let me give you a, a real quick history uh, on my exposure to swim baits. A lot of years ago, I got to go out west. I was involved in a video called Big Bait Posse with some of the pioneers of swim baiting. I opened up my eyes to big bait fishing. Uh, it opened up my eyes to how to catch a big grade of fish. But even all those years passing, I still kind of would shy away from these big hard glide baits. It wasn't until recently that my interest was re-sparked on fishing these big hard swim baits. And the last six months, I've really been playing with these, using these, and catching some really big bass. So this information I'm going to give to you today is what I've learned in the last year, some of the tips and techniques on how to fish these big hard glide baits. But I encourage all of you to keep looking around out there. There's some amazing swim bait fishermen out there, way better than I am, that has some great information as well. Um, so let's talk about the glide bait first. Let's Let's dissect a little bit what makes it a glide bait. And in my experience, these baits that have that S gliding motion, right? You know, when you look at a swim bait, a hard swim bait, you're going to see a joint or a series of joints in the bait, a separation point. And in my experience, the, the, the ones that have a single joint, one segment, right? One jointed segment. They're the, the hard swim baits that obtain that S motion. And if that's what you're looking for, look for those hard glide baits that have one joint. When you start adding other segments, there's two joints, three joints, multi-segmented hard swim baits. They have a tighter a snaking motion, a, a tighter side-to-side -side swimming motion. But a bait with a single joint indicates that it will have that wider S motion. And there's a lot of good ones out there. I've, I've been experimenting with a lot of them, um, different styles. Some are resin, some are hard plastic, ABS, a lot of different materials. Um, so, but if you notice, three different brands, three different colors, but they all have that single joint, right? They all have that single joint, which is so indicative of that wider S glide, that wider motion. And there's something about that in the water that appeals to big fish. You know, when I first saw these baits in the water and you look down, you look at them, you're like, oh my God, they look real. They actually look like a big bait fish swimming. And in the environment over the years, when I would see a big shad or a big gizzard shad or a big herring or a big golden shiner or even a trout, and when it was sort of lost or disoriented or injured, the movement was this lazy, slow movement, right? When that fish is, that, when that bait fish is alert and alive, man, it swims quick. It stays with the school. It's, it's moving quick. But when it's hurt, right? When that gizzard shad is hurt, it often does a slow, lazy swim that's identical to these glide baits. And I think that's really part of the appeal of these single joint glide baits is it 
does a great job of mimicking a, a hurt bait fish, okay? So these are the baits. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the rod, the reel, and the line I'm throwing these on. And then the meat of this video, the meat of this in the shop is I'm going to give you how I've been retrieving these lures to get the strikes, to generate the strikes. So we're going to talk about the retrieve. And then last but not least, I'm going to leave you with about three or four, sprinkling three or four little modifications that I've been making to help you in your glide bait fishing, okay? All right, let's start with the rod reel and line. Look at that thing. That is a big bait. And I've got one right here in a package. This one happens to be the Storm Arashi, which I love. And here's the great thing about the Storm Arashi. It's like 40 bucks. It's like 30 or $40. A lot of big giant swim baits can be 100, 150, 200, 300, $400. This one's like 30, 40 bucks. So it's very affordable. But these Arashis, you ready for this? Three and an eighth ounce. So it's big, it's heavy. Some of these things are even heavier. I've seen four, five ounce glide baits. This is, uh, by the way, this is a seven and a half inch, three and an eighth ounce. Um, I've used them up to, to 9, 10 inches. They have 12, they have 15 inch glide baits. So you can get whatever size you need. But this is, to me, a good standard size glide bait. I'd say 6 to 8 inch bait. This is a 7. It's a pretty good bait to start with when you're glide bait fishing. But because that thing is so big and heavy, right? Look at this. It's a pretty big, heavy bait. We're not going to throw it on standard bait casting tackle. Don't throw this on the same rod you would throw a flipping tube or a spinner bait or a chatter bait. You're going to need a heavier rod. And I've really experimented with some different rods. The ideal rod to me to throw these bigger glide baits is an eight to nine foot, eight to eight and a half to nine feet, eight to nine foot Heavy, fast action rod. A, a eight to nine foot heavy, fast action rod is the rod to throw that on. And you know, it's big. So you need a big rod to really lob that bait out there to get the casting distance and also to be able to muscle these big fish in. So this is one that I've really fallen in love with and it's, um, it's an Abu Garcia and this is the villain, eight foot heavy, fast, and it's rated from about half an ounce all the way up to four ounces, okay? So it handles this bait perfect. Uh, the other thing is when you pick a eight to nine foot heavy or extra heavy fast rod, pick one that has a longer handle length, right? This villain has an extra couple inches on the handle length, and when you go to lob it, that's going to give you that second grip to really make those long casts. Real quick before I get to the line and the reel, it's an eight to nine foot heavy fast, but I want you to see something. There's still a little tip there, right? I want you to, even though this is an eight to nine foot heavy rod, I still want you to have just a little bit of tip. So when I put a, a load on that rod, you're going to see about 10%, that's it, just about here, 10% of that rod has a little flex to it. But that's important. You don't want a rod that is super stiff from the butt to the tip. You want a little flex for lobbing that bait, for setting the hook, and for landing that fish, okay? Okay, eight, eight to nine foot heavy fast. On reel, what I've learned so far is that Generally, you want a little slower reel than you would normally use. And you're going to understand that when I start talking about the retrieve. Now, you know, when I say a little bit slower, I want you to, to go down from those eight to ones, nine to ones, to a more moderate retrieve. In my opinion, a reel that's in the high fives, five eight to one, 
to seven to one in that range is the right retrieve. My two favorite is a Revo Ike, which is a six, six to one, the Revo Ike six, six to one casting reel. Or this is a great one that I've been using. And this is the Revo Beast X. And the Beast X is actually a six, four to one. And again, in a second, you're gonna hear me talk about why that lower, more powerful gear ratio is better for a glide bait. All right, last but not least, line choices. Line choices. Ask a thousand glide bait, swim bait fishermen, and they will give you a thousand different answers on what line. But this is my video, so I'm gonna give you my choices. And when I'm glide bait fishing, I wanna use heavy fluorocarbon or heavy monofilament. Heavy fluorocarbon or heavy monofilament. And when I say heavy, 20 to 35 pound line. I really, really like the 20, the 25, and the 30 are my favorite line sizes. Think about the size of the fish. Think about the cover you're fishing around. But here's the deal. You ready with this heavy line? When you want that glide bait to be fished lower in the water column, right? If the fish are deeper, if your water's clearer, um, if you want to keep the bait lower, use fluorocarbon. The 25-pound 20, Berkeley Trilene, 100% fluorocarbon, is amazing on a glide bait. It helps to keep the glide bait deeper. But, on the other hand, if you want to keep that glide bait higher, and sometimes you want to keep it really high, if the water is dirtier, if the water's shallow, if you're fishing over top of submerged cover, and you want to purposely keep that glide bait higher in the water column, go to the heavy monofilament. 20, 25, 30, even 35 if you're in some heavy cover situations. Okay, so on line, heavy, fluoro, or mono, depending on what you want to do with the bait. The other thing about using mono and fluorocarbon versus braid, and some people use braid, but the thing I like about fluorocarbon and mono when I'm using this bait is there's a little bit of stretch to it, right? Mono, a little more than fluoro, but both of them have, look, a little stretch. I like that line having a little stretch because I want to tell you why. A lot of these bites you get, these are treble hooked baits. Look, this is a hard glide bait. It's got trebles on it. Big number one, number two, one-aught trebles. Like a crankbait, when that big swim bait fish eats this, or you feel them, or you see them behind it and watch them eat, your instinct is to pull. And when you pull, I like to have a little stretch in that line. Flora and mono have a little stretch, and it lets them get their mouth around the bait before you, you get into them. So I like the fact that there's a little stretch. Also, when you're fighting them, and they're doing the head shaking, that little bit of stretch is gonna help you keep them buttoned, okay? So, big rod, big reel with a lower gear ratio, and last but not least, big line, okay? All right, let's get into the retrieve on these baits. And, and again, in my short time fishing these glide baits, I've learned a couple really cool techniques. In general, we want to retrieve these big hard glide baits. You ready for this? And again, I said in general, we want to retrieve these big hard glide baits slow to medium retrieve. And in a slow to medium retrieve, it's going to allow us to get that bait to do that big S. The faster we reel, the more it, it tightens up the S and it makes it move um, a lot more rapidly through the water. 
Think about what I said in the beginning of this video. I want this bait to look like a big, injured, disoriented forage. And because of that, that slow to medium retrieve lets it get those big S's in the water. And I'm gonna throw, I'm just gonna throw a little line out so I can kind of show you uh, with my hands about, I would say my average retrieve. And it's about like this, okay, you ready? Just slow, medium, methodical. And it's just, just that slow wind, just a slow, methodical wind, okay? Slow, methodical wind with that bait. And you're gonna make that bait achieve that, that big S motion. But instead of straight reeling from when the bait lands to when the bait's back to the boat, instead of just the whole way back slow steady, the biggest thing I've learned about these glide baits is to throw interruptions into the steady retrieve, okay? I wanna explain that in a second, but I wanna give you my theory on why a change or an interruption in that movement is so key. If you can imagine this slow, steady retrieve, and here is this bait looking like an injured bait fish disoriented. A lot of those fish see it. And believe me, even in dirty or stained water, they see that bait from a long distance away. When they see it, they, they're almost, following that bait, watching it, waiting for that bait to make a mistake or do something different. So by throwing in an interruption, whether it's a pause or whether it's a twitch, and we'll talk about that in a second, a little twitch, bait turns, 360. That's a triggering point for those fish. So during that retrieve from when when the bait splashes down, right, you lob it out there really far. By the way, long casts are really important with these baits, especially in cleaner water. So you lob that bait out there, it hits. From the beginning to the time it gets back to the boat, I like to throw in an interruption every 10 cranks, every eight to 10 cranks. I'm gonna throw in a pause or a little rod twitch, and it's gonna make that bait stop or change direction, an interruption in that rhythm. Here's a great percentage for you. 90% of the bites I get on this thing happen when I interrupt or change that slow, methodical retrieve. Um, I hope you get to watch on my channel some of the fishing videos with this and watch, pause it if you want. You're gonna see a lot of those bites happen when I'm reeling. I throw that pause in there and right when I go to start it back up, right, it pauses, right when I go to start it back up, because he's following it, he sees that interruption, he knows it's time to pounce, or a lot of them are that twitch, and you'll see in my videos, slow, steady retrieve, right? I get to about my eighth or 10th crank and I just tink, throw in a little twitch of the rod. And a twitch of the rod, when you hit it and follow it back, will throw slack into the retrieve. And these glide baits, I mean all of them, all these different brands, when you twitch it, it turns back on itself. It actually, you know, think about that glide and you twitch it, Poof, and it spins back. Can you imagine what that bass is thinking when the fish that he's hunting is looking straight at him? I'll tell you what he's thinking. I'm eating that thing because they love to eat forage head first. So when that thing's looking at him dead in the eye, it's a reaction. He has no choice but to eat it. They, they eat them so many times head first. You'd be surprised how many times these big baits I come back with a giant bucket mouth and that's all I see. You'd be surprised how many times because they're eating it head first, right? So slow, methodical retrieve followed by interruptions the entire way back, okay? Um, 
I'm going to throw this thing anywhere I would throw a normal bait, right? I think too many people when they're fishing these big guy baits say, I got to throw it out in open water only. It's a good bait for open water, for sure. But when I'm making my cast, my mindset's the same, right? Is there a log there? I want to throw it by the side of that log. Is there a drop off? I want, to, I want this bait to come across the drop off. A boulder, a weed edge, milfoil. Do everything you do with a crankbait and a spinnerbait and a chatterbait, throw this the same places, okay? Don't, don't think about, you have to throw it out in open water. Throw it the same places. Um, let me talk about the hook set a little bit, and then I'm gonna get into some really cool little tips for you. So the hook set, I had to learn, and I, I just wanna make sure I talk about this in, in, in this video. The hook set on a big hard glide bait is not the same hook set as a jig, or a chatterbait, or a spinnerbait, or a Carolina rig. It's not the same. And I've missed some fish by trying to drop line and jack like you would with a jig, right? Do not do that. As you retrieve that bait, slow and methodical, with pauses or little twitches in there, when you feel that bite, or you watch that eat, and you feel that line get tight, just side sweep into the fish. So it's not, it's not as slow as you would like with a drop shot, but it's almost a side sweeping motion. And when I start to side sweep, I actually shift my body back. So my body weight is going with that fish and I drive home the hook with a side momentum. And think about that with those treble hooks, right? Again, cost a minor. Again, you want that fish to eat the bait, and when you side sweep, it lets him get a little more of it, and then you just get into him, and you pin those trebles in his mouth, okay? So no jack slack line hook set, a side sweep, side, side sweep into the fish, and you're gonna land a lot of them. You, you're not gonna miss them like you would with that big, hard jig hook set, okay? All right, let's go through a couple of these little tips uh, that I found, and, um, and hopefully you can use some of these modifications on your swim baits as well. Uh, one is I really like a snap, and the nice thing about the Storm Mirashis is they come with a cross lock snap. Um, the snap, if you want to give it maximum action, if you want these baits to have maximum action, a cross lock snap, a heavy duty one, is a good choice, okay? Gives them a lot better action. Um, the next thing I've noticed is fall rate, the fall rate of the bait. And almost all of these hard glide baits are what I would call a slow sink bait. But when you want to get the bait to sink faster, and there are times when you want that bait to go deeper, Storm suspend strips right on the belly, just like you would on a jerk bait, are perfect. Um, I just add them straight to the belly uh, on the top joint, which is key, okay? So you, you see the two segments, and when I'm adding those Storm suspend strips, I'll add them to the top joint, and I do it on either side of the hook hanger. The top of the hook hanger, the belly of the hook hanger on that top joint. And that makes a nice even weighting system. And you could add these suspend strips to get this bait to sink at whatever rate you want. So if you want a faster sink rate, storm suspend strips are perfect. Treble hooks are probably the most important modification you can make. So, I've played with quad treble hooks and I've played with a lot of different kind. My favorite treble hook for these big glide style swim baits is a VMC hybrid. And when you look at the design of a VMC hybrid, they call it a hybrid because it's a cross between a traditional round bend, 
right? Look, there are the factory hooks on a Sturm and Rashi. They're round bends. Well, this hybrid is a cross between a round bend and an EWG. And I love these. Uh, the 1X Strong or the 2X Strong VMC hybrids, the number ones, the one aught, the two aught, depending on what size bait you're using. The number ones are perfect for a lot of these six and seven inch glide baits, okay? So trebles are important. If you're getting fish that are hitting and not, not getting hooked, fish that are attacking but not eating it, try a treble hook with a blade or feathers on it. I've seen that little flash. That's a, a bladed hybrid treble. A little bit of flash with a blade. Also a feather can help you turn followers and sniffers into eaters, okay? So treble hooks are super key. Um, got two more for you. Scent, scent. And this one, guys will debate with me. I've seen it way too many times fishing a hard glide bait, right? Not a soft bait, but a hard glide bait. We're adding scent to this bait every 40, 50 casts makes a difference. Think about those fish. Think about what I said. They're following it, right? They're behind it. They're trailing it. They're watching it as it glides. Dude, they're also smelling it. And I promise you a good quality scent on that bait will help you get more bites. I love Liquid Mayhem. Liquid Mayhem's real sticky. It's a sticky paste and it stays on those hard baits really, really good. All right, last tip for your glide bait fishing. I like to watch this glide bait a lot, and I like to, to fish it from just under the surface to where I can barely, I can't see it anymore, right? Just where it gets too dark to see it. So that one to four or five foot down, depending on how clear the water is, that's where I love to fish these glide baits, and I like to watch them. Some of these baits that are real bright white baits, look at this one, got a real bright green, white sides. They're real easy to track. They're real easy for you to see in the water and keep your eye on them during the retrieve. But some of these swim baits, if you get into a place where they're on a perch pattern or a darker style swim bait, that's a translucent perch pattern, Arashi. They're hard to see. So a little trick that I do is I add a little patch of color somewhere on the top of that bait. I usually do it right on the head or on the back of that top joint. And you could add a little pop of color real easy by using a bright orange, a bright red, a, a fluorescent chartreuse, and just a little dot of color. And this is the, uh, the worm and chunk, chunk paint by Spike It, which is, um, it's a latex based paint. So look at that. It, it, it's not like the regular soft plastic spike it. It applies the hard baits real well and it gives you a visual dot of color that helps you keep track of that lure as it comes in. Man, let me tell you, I, I hope you learned a little bit in this in the shop about fishing a big glide bait. I'm still new to it. I'm excited by it. I'm catching some of the biggest bass of my life on these big glide baits, and you will too if you give them a try. Man, I hope you enjoyed this in the shop. If you like what you're listening to, if you like what you're watching, stop right now, mash that subscribe button, subscribe to my channel. If you're already a subscriber, do me a favor, tell your fishing friends about Mike Iaconelli Fishing on YouTube. We've got educational content coming to you every single week. Uh, there you have it, glide bait fishing, big bass, what else can you ask for? Bye.